You announced recently that the official policy of Facebook now allows politicians to pay to spread disinformation um, in 2020 elections and in the future. So I just want to know how far I can push this um, in the next year. Under your policy, you know, using census data as well, could I pay to target predominantly black zip codes and advertise them the incorrect election date? No, Congresswoman, you couldn't. We, we have, even for these policies around the newsworthiness of, of mm -hmm. content that politicians say and the general principle that I believe that... But you said you're not going to fact check my we, ads. We have, if, if, uh, if anyone, including a politician, is saying things that uh, can cause, that is calling for violence or uh, could risk imminent physical harm or voter or census suppression mm -hmm. when we roll out the census suppression policy, um, we will take that content down. So, so you will... There is some threshold where you will fact check political advertisements. Is that what you're telling me? Well, Congresswoman, yes, and for specific things like that, where there's imminent risk of harm. Could I Both run ads targeting Republicans in primaries saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? Sorry, I, I, can you repeat that? Would I be able to run advertisements on Facebook targeting Republicans in primaries saying that they voted for the Green New Deal? I mean, if you're not fact-checking political advertisements, I'm just trying to understand the, the bounds here. What's fair game? Congresswoman, I, uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I think So probably. you don't know if I'll be able to do that? I think probably. Um, do you see a potential problem here with a complete lack of fact-checking on political advertisements? Well, Congresswoman, I think lying is bad, and I think if you were to run an ad that had a lie, that would be bad. That's different from it being... Uh, from it, from for in our position, the right thing to do to prevent uh, your constituents or people in an election from seeing that you had lied. Um, so we can, so you won't take down lies or you will take down lies? I think it's just a pretty simple yes or no. Congresswoman, uh, in- I'm not talking about spin. I'm talking about actual in, Yes, in most cases, in a democracy, okay. I believe that people should be able to see for themselves what politicians that they may or may not vote for so are you saying won't take judge them their down. character for themselves. So you won't take, you may flag that it's wrong, but you won't take it down. Uh, Congresswoman, it's, uh, it, it depends on the context that it shows up. This is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez during a congressional hearing with Mark Zuckerberg in the aftermath of Facebook's decision that it's allowing lies in political ads. And the reason here is simple. Facebook isn't interested in holding itself accountable for the information that's spread on its platform. It's only interested in accepting money for it. And the issues come to the forefront given what else but a surge in ads from the Trump campaign with proven lies. And that includes the claim that the Ukrainian prosecutor was forced out for leading a corruption investigation into Burisma, where Hunter Biden was on the board of directors. And demonstrably false ads like these have been viewed by millions of people, while Facebook continues to rake in funds at a rate sometimes as high as a million dollars a week by the Trump campaign. Now, Facebook's excuse is that they're not in the business of limiting speech by politicians, that people should have the right to hear what elected officials have to say, even if it's completely false. But this is actually a step backwards, because on television, cable networks have the ability to reject ads that contain lies, and they they do, including the very ad about Hunter Biden that brought this issue into the mainstream. So for Facebook to claim that it's impossible to police this type of thing when television networks already do it is proof that it's not about their inability to do so, it's about their unwillingness to. Another excuse we'll hear is that Facebook views itself as a technology platform and not a news platform, which sounds like it makes sense until you consider the fact that its algorithm allows it to decide what information will reach you. In other words, Facebook is actively curating the news you get to see. It favors certain media sources over others and even allows sources that have shown a proclivity to lie to continue to disseminate news unabated. To claim then that Facebook isn't a news platform is to purposefully disregard what Facebook does and how its users view the site. It is a bad faith excuse to wash its hands of any and all responsibility while still allowing it to achieve its ultimate goal of collecting checks from campaigns desperate to lie to Facebook's users. Now, Facebook's solution has been to make political ads public so that research and the media can investigate the content of the ads themselves, that a public debate over the merits of the ads is the most democratic solution. Only, if you actually think these low information voters that these ads target are gonna delve into an in-depth research campaign of an ad they see on Facebook, rather than just take it all at face value, you're kidding yourself. For some of these people, just turning the computer on is an accomplishment. But beyond that, 
people, especially low information people, often trust that the ads they're seeing from a political campaign are true. Behavior that's been reinforced in that TV networks historically don't air such brazen lies. So while Facebook is leaning on this idea that it's better to just allow outright lies and the invisible hands of the marketplace will just work it all out, that solution doesn't have any basis in reality. The fact is that if Facebook isn't capable or willing to be responsible in the way that it disseminates information that it's more than happy to cash the checks for, then political ads shouldn't be allowed on the site. In the same way that it moderates content like violence and pornography, the site has a responsibility to make sure that the information that they are actively showing us is not false. And Facebook might claim that this is a false equivalency, that lies and political ads aren't the same as showing violent content. But these ads are purposefully designed to sway low information voters into voting candidates into offices that do impact real lives. The people who voted for Trump, perhaps based on false pretenses, elected a person whose foreign policies might mean that someone who would have otherwise lived doesn't. Those ads might sway people to vote for Trump who could rip healthcare away from someone with a pre-existing condition, who could relax emission standards and impact someone with asthma, who could loosen building regulations for a construction worker who will be less safe on the job. Those ads might seem innocent, but the votes they can inspire have real world impacts. So AOC and other Democrats should run ads with brazen lies and push the envelope as far as they can go. Because until Facebook deigns to stop cashing those checks and instead holds itself accountable to find an acceptable solution, it's only proving itself to be part of the problem.